raining and we've had flash floods. So I reckon something is up. Well, this is pretty serious because as you can see, the mount comes on an entire pallet. That's why we're here. So weird being in this empty dome. I've been able to clean up a little bit. But the reason I've been hyping up this new mount is because it is a big deal to me. I've had the last mount for four years, but it lived in this room and it never moved. I think I took it to a star party once and it was such a huge pain to have to set up the observatory all over again. I knew that when the opportunity came up for me to get a new mount, I needed something that was more observatory grade. So this isn't the sort of mount that you would need for going out to star parties. It's not portable in any way, but it is currently the mount that I've had my eye on ever since it was released. Now I ran a poll on my community page to see if any of you would guess what mounts I'd be going for, but I was a little bit sneaky. The exact mount I ended up getting is not technically on this list, but anyway, I promised a mount reveal at 1 million subs, so let's see how we're going. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Look, I'm not going to give you blue ball any further. Let's just set up this new map. sweating bullets in the uh, harsh Australian sun out here but we have liftoff as you can see I've gone for the pier tripod uh, because I had the choice I've said on record before you don't actually need a pier I think they're overrated they don't actually add anything to your setup especially if you're permanent a few people in the comments didn't agree and that's fine I don't think it makes a huge difference but since I'm rebuilding from scratch anyway I thought just treat myself uh, so it's always good to just make sure you're level across all axes line it up with the tripod legs and then you can see what you need to adjust to get true level oh christ uh, yeah oh, true level oh. bitch uh, but i'm pretty good there what was cool though and these were optional but these feet here allow you to level just by turning these knobs so you can push it up or down which is actually really handy once you're set up i didn't have to put these in and i tested the level without them and I was level anyway but I do like the option of having them there so I'm gonna leave them there it also distributes the weight over this which is actually plastic from Ikea but it works quite nicely because this acts as a kind of drainage you can see how wet this is so it keeps all the moisture under especially with the huge rains we've been having I don't know if this height is gonna be okay but I think that's sort of about where the CGX was anyway so hopefully once this is all loaded up with the rasa and guides goats and whatever else it will fit. Now it's time for the mount head. The other thing I need to be sure of is whether this is actually in the middle of the dome because that makes a difference for dome geometry whether there is an offset between this and the exact middle uh, which you can adjust for in your ASCOM driver and some of the settings in the dome software in this case the next dome software. All right, take 500. I mean, I'm gonna give myself a prolapse though. Should probably screw that in. God damn it. It is so hot. There is no way I'd be doing this in the lab coat. Well, it's all here. I think all that's left to do now is dial in my rough polar alignment. This bit has a bar that you can use to actually spin around easier, but you don't 
actually need it. And the idea is that you can take the bar out so that you don't accidentally, you know, hit it and move your polar alignment once it's set in. I know I'm at about 28. I think that's pretty much right. Now it's a matter of turning this guy on and polar aligning it properly. If the sky ever clears up, which is not today. Maybe I'll just take some uh, gear porn. B-roll. Here we go. hear the sound that it makes. So I know the sound of this one is beautiful. I've heard it before. I heard it during launch event actually. I think I'm at the point where I need to put a telescope on this before I turn it on but I'm just worried that I've done this all wrong. I'm just going to go around and make sure everything's tight and this isn't going to fall over as soon as I put a load on it and then we'll listen to the sound. Look at that green and orange together as one. Ebony and ivory They've uh, provided a cable for this 12 volt jack, but it's a cigarette lighter. Um, you know. I'm not in the 1980s, I don't smoke, I don't have my Datsun 120B in the driveway ready to plug this into. It always seems weird that you buy something as big as a professional <laughs> observatory grade mount and you don't get a dedicated power supply for it. Now this is something I have to source. 48 hours later. So I was looking back over that footage and realized that I didn't really properly explain how important the observatory mount is. The mount is essentially the heart of the observatory. Everything happens around that, which is why you've probably heard a lot of people say you just spend more money on the mount before you spend money on the telescope. And that is, I believe, very, very true. Over the years, I've probably had about four different mounts and every one has been incrementally better than the last one. And this one is no exception. Now, the reason I chose this one is because you remember, I actually did the launch for this one in Sydney. I went down to Bintel and it was a worldwide exclusive. Uh, but looking back over YouTube and Google now, I don't see a lot of information about this particular mount. Obviously the EQ6R is very, very popular. A lot of people use it, but Trevor did use this particular mount on launch day, which I was very, very jealous about. Uh, but finally, I've been able to save up enough money to buy one for myself. Now, full disclaimer, I did get a discount from Skywatcher Australia, so shout out to Skywatcher Australia, thank you for that. Uh, however, I did pay money for this mount. I do feel like I've come full circle though, having announced this mount to the world, now that I've got one in my backyard, along with comet discoverer Terry Lovejoy and award-winning astrophotographer Phil Hart, who has done a very comprehensive review of this particular mount, uh, you'll be seeing a lot more SINSCAN related and Skywatcher mount related content on this channel. But for now, I've got the little bit I need. All right, moment of truth. Oops, hey Siri, turn the observatory on. All right, auto sleuth home. This is its homing, I guess. <gasps> Didn't you hear that? No, not really. It's so goddamn quiet. This is telescope ASMR. Look at me, slewing the deck. And here I am, slewing the RA. Well, that is really, really nice and I'm really happy with it so far. Now it's time for me to play with software and uh, get this all connected to the dome and all of that. I won't put you through that bit. I just want to get back to taking photos. Thanks again to Skywatcher Australia for helping me out with this. 
Uh, unbeknownst to the channel, uh, this is an order that I've had going since late last year, basically. So if you're worried that you haven't got your mount and I've somehow skipped the queue, I haven't. Uh, I've been waiting a long time, which is why I've been so excited. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more astronomy content. I hope your astronomy journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>